different projects from a, a weather balloon that goes into space to a, an anthropomorphic a robotic arm and the brain computer interface to control that arm. So there's like a ton of stuff you know, in your engineering or whatever. But this year, and what's cool is through the club, we decided to do our own project. Ohad really thought of it. And the name's up here, you can see. So we came up with our own. There was, there was like a couple okay computer science ones, like programming ones. We wanted to like do something real, you know? And so they let us make this, pro this program. It was just, our, just his idea, really. He, he pitched it. So if you have any good ideas for a program and you want some like people, some like workers behind you to, to fulfill an idea, definitely think of it and consider it if you're going to be joining the 3SP program. All right. That's it. That's all I got. You have like two minutes. I just explained. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Oh. So anyway, we're going to talk about Bergen Routes. That's our project. You want to you want to talk about your conception of the idea and stuff? Um, yeah, sure. So we were like Matt said, we were trying to find different projects that we could do for the club, um, group projects of involving multiple developers, and we had the idea of creating a software that would help students navigate the campus building. So because I don't know about you guys, but I mean, I still get lost. I've been here for two years. First time I was on campus, I couldn't find anything. And the signs weren't really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Also, our original room for the computer science club was not in a good spot. Yeah. Know, it was hard to find. So uh, we conceived of the idea there. Originally, the first thing you think of is we're going to use the GPS that's in the phone, right? But the issue with the GPS is that it's not very accurate. So if you try to uh, locate a phone in a building, you're probably going to be in the wrong hallway or something. Even if you were pretty close, we need pinpoint <coughs> accuracy to determine your location. I mean, if you go out in the hallways and you look, there are like doors that are literally up against each other. I mean, it really would be like not feasible to, for us to do that. We don't have the millions of dollars of research that we would need in order to build a program like that. So we came up with the idea of instead using 300, 360 degree images that we would load up and it would give you a chance to look around so you could sort of ascertain your location. Uh, we would have them in series, so they would play like a video. We'd swap an image for an image, and you would see yourself progressing down the hallway. We created an interface so that you could interact with that, and then that way you could see your journey as you went along and make sure you were in the right spot, and see all the turns that you need to take. We also wanted to project a pathway on the ground. Uh, so we yeah, this is what it actually looks like, right, yeah. right at this moment. And, uh, so one of the big uh, kind of selling points for this application is the ability to access it uh, wherever you are in the building. So to do that, you come up to a sign, uh, you scan a QR code, and the QR code takes you to the application because the application is based uh, in a website. Yeah, so no downloading anything. That, that's easier for people who have maybe older phones or stuff like that. Not everybody can access it just on their browser through a QR code. No downloading, no, no craziness. Yeah, no shenanigans. Yeah, no shenanigans. None. Zero. Zero. None whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, the idea was to basically have like Google Maps for the school. You can see it kind of looks like a Google Maps street view, but we got a 360 interface. Instead of the, the car going around, we have some people put down a, a th literally a 360 degree camera, hide behind the door, take the picture, and then move it a couple feet forward, where every picture represents a node or a point which is like connected in 3D space. And so every node, there's a picture. And what, how we map the nodes and all that stuff, we started with some CAD software. Does anybody know about like computer-aided design and the architecture stuff? A little bit? Well, it's called CAD software, and it basically is like a top-down map of your building and with all the architectural information and planning and all that stuff. So we were able to get that for the school. And basically on top of it, we overlaid a basically a grid, a little dots or points where we would focus on a picture for that point. There was a lot of decisions that went into all this stuff, and uh, the database is really where like the, the application, that's where it's like, it's meat and potatoes comes from this data schema. Can I talk about that one? Yeah, depending on the angle, let's see. Um, how many of you are familiar with uh, handling data in a larger application? How many of you have taken a class for the databases besides you, because you're in my class? Uh, anybody else? Linux? Yeah, intro to Linux covers, so MySQL, that's, uh, that's database. Yeah, you guys work with LAMP, right? Yeah. 
So you have MySQL built in, because that's based off of just the standard uh, Apache web server, right. Assembly, right? Yeah, we just got into the Apache. Have you worked with SQL at all and everything like that? Uh, it was very brief in that class. Well, you can imagine, like, maybe, maybe this will jog your memory. It's like a uppercase select and then a little star and then blah, blah, blah. The idea is, is I don't if know you, if we did. If you have an application, uh, obviously, you know, anything that's a data driven application requires data to be organized in the background. And as you can imagine, if you're taking a bunch of photographs of nodes in, a, in the hallways of a building, you need a way to organize that data and to access that data. Uh, SQL servers are one solution for that. There's a lot of solutions out there. Uh, this one in particular is very good for applications where you need definite data. So the data can't change at all or deviate from its set design. Otherwise, you know, you couldn't be assured that when you ask for information, you're going to receive what you asked for. A good way to think of this is like an Excel file with a table that says maybe uh, it's in XY position or it has this level of access to it. So you can imagine it's just a list of different things that may be connected through one point. It's called relational data. So that one point where it's connecting to maybe may hold other information that you might need. And so it's kind of like a pretty complicated web once you get down to it. And that's where a lot of thought goes into the database and, and the planning for the data scheme. That's a lot of this app is thinking. You know, it's not actually programming. I'm not gonna lie. We did a lot of programming, him especially. But a lot of making applications like this comes down to sitting down and just thinking about it, talking it out, and writing some thoughts down. Because if you don't have any of that, you're not going to have a plan, and then it just gets into a big mess. You know? To give you an example, if you create a structure for your data, and then you decide to change it when you've already created your application, you've got to actually change your application to deal with the new kind of data. So you can imagine how much work would go into that. That's why planning ahead of time for this kind of project was, was very important. Yeah. So once we have our some, some data, we maybe say we got some nodes, we map them out on um, this sort of management software. It's very small, but you can see there's just a bunch of little dots. Those are our nodes. And once we've got all of that set, we can like work on actually manipulating the data and stuff. So for the project, we had like four, three or four custom softwares just to enable us to, to manipulate this stuff. That's such as the right there. Yeah, yeah, well, there's so many. The alignment tool. So a 360 degree picture is actually like a regular picture. Yeah. And it gets wrapped. Sorry, I don't have a pen. But it gets wrapped. You know, so it makes sort of like, it, it's, it gets kind of distorted and stuff. And in order to have a hallway that's behind you, 360 degree picture is just like this. It's two by one. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah the actual ratio for it is two. Oh, well, he knows. So it's two by one. So it's, it's sort of like, you know, uh, like going to the movie theater, that kind of ratio. And um, it, it's kind of cool. You, you could imagine almost like standing in the center of a globe, a hollow globe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you look all around you, you see like images of things, right? Because that's, you, you got to look all around. For it's like being in an IMAX, you know? It's like, it's like curling the rest of the screen to be inside oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Let's think of the planetarium oh, or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, a good one too. Yeah, so, so, you know, it's like, how do we take a, a two-dimensional image and wrap it around the interior of the sphere? And a two-by-one ratio is apparently how you do it. Yes, but, but how do you do That's that? That's funky then, math. How do you do that and then draw a straight line down the middle? That was, the, that was a big challenge. No, of... so I, our solution was actually very lazy. Uh, we, <laughs> Sometimes we, it's, they are. Because yeah. yeah. we have a three-dimensional sphere, and we've already projected an image onto it. So at that point, anything that you put down in the world three-dimensionally, will look like it's existing in that image, like in the three-dimensional space of that image. It's really difficult to explain this. I know, it like, is. Well, basically, um, we, yeah, he made this aligner. It's got these rails. You could basically, like, it was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun doing it. You basically, like, you, 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 you make the rails tight to, like, the hallway so that it's, like, sort of like a flat surface on the ground. And that allows you to have, like, a path behind you and in front of you at the same time. Because basically, the, the, the reason why we had a software like that, we should probably backtrack a little yeah. bit, is uh, if you have a collection of images, and they're all at different orientations, so different angles, but you're going down a straight hallway, right? If you take a step forward, but the image that precedes the one that you were just at is slightly askew, basically it'll look like you're like walking down the hallway in zigzags. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that each image that follows the image that you're currently at 
is aligned so that they're all facing the same direction. You can't do that with these cameras because there's no real way to like specify the direction that your image is going to come out in. So we had to create a specialized tool that would help us visualize the orientation of the images and how they were skewing. Yeah, that's one of many. We, we had one the for naming name. images. Yeah, the Imaginamer. <laughs> uh, Image Namer. Yeah. Imaginamer. Yeah, yeah. Which, which I wrote in, in, in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, wow. There's a lot of WinForms applications. So Jacob's you can imagine. Just, uh, yeah, the node management application is Jacob's. And uh, it's, it's also a WinForms.net application. That's Jacob Zelensky. You've probably seen him in the Discord. He's the uh, previous yeah. president of like a wild man, you, you you type something and he's already responding. Damn. Yeah. He's like the flag. Yeah, he is. He's crazy. He's also a math genius and, and knows all about this school. So. Yeah. Um, so the, there are like new faces here, right? There's like stuff changes. Well, then I recognize, I don't recognize you. I don't recognize her. Uh, computer science or IT? Computer science. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Also very nice. Uh, for computer science, um, are you interested in working with software applications? Which direction are you thinking of taking? I'm kind of going through the JavaScript right now. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of interested in front-end development. Cool. And want to find the interview. Uh, get an interview and find the kind of job, actually. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. Are you going for an associate or are you going to keep, uh, keep going? Keep going, yeah. Nice, cool. very good. Yeah, it's good to keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so uh, we really didn't talk about like the core of the application, which is like the algorithm. Um, People want to hear about that. Yeah, it's, it's a computer technology. <laughs> it's just going to be a little bit about it. We're not going to get too crazy. Um, so basically, you have your data, right? You have all this information, but how do you process it? How do you realize what you want out of your application? In an application, you have an in, you process it, and you have an out, right? So our in is gonna be two locations, right? A start and a destination. How are we gonna be able to find the shortest route? Like, it's just it's not listed. We didn't pre-calculate all this, you know? So we have something called an algorithm. Many of you have probably heard of it. If not, you will. Which is just a well-defined set of steps that allows us to find the shortest path between two points. And in between our nodes, our little edges, or like the lines, those are weighted, weighted, basically a distance. So each circle is attached to a line, each line has a distance. The sh when the distance is added up over like how, so however many routes, the shortest distance is found to be the quickest route. And so that's returned and you're given the quickest route on your screen. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah, um, I wish the, that was still running. Ah, uh, I know, this doesn't work anymore. Uh, what's, uh, uh, Heroku good. doesn't work anymore. No more free. You have to pay for you it. Can, you can look up those algorithms. They, they really yeah. are in common use. Our case is a bit specific because of the, the nature of the application. But, right, yeah. so like when we use by name, I'm sure you don't, don't, aren't interested in looking it up, but it's called the Dijkstra's algorithm, D-I-K-S-T-R-A. Very, very popular. Um, it's one of many searching and sorting Ours algorithms. Is, uh, a star. Right. We are specifically is the A star, which is like a derivative of the... It's an optimization. So right. a lot of times they'll have a base algorithm that somebody invents at some point in the 60s. And then after that point, everybody just tries to mix it up to make it a little bit better. So uh, yeah, I'm joking about the 60s. I don't yeah. know what I was doing. But... I think it was the 80s. Uh, yeah. yeah. It'd be one of those decades. Um, yeah. That was what we used, and it uh, it worked pretty well, honestly. If you check this link out, you can scan this, and you'll get the demo. This is the demo. You'll see you put two random pieces of information in, two random uh, fake things. This, it, obviously, we filled it with, with nonsense data, really. His bedroom was in it for a while. Ohad's bedroom you could find on there for a long time until the dean uh, co confronted us about it during our poster competition. Yeah. Anyway. And then we had to race to get rid of it last night. Yeah, it's pretty like great. Within the <laughs> 10 minutes before the competition. So. That's fun. Yeah. yeah, you can scan that code and you'll get that screen. And uh, uh, some features are in there that we haven't really talked about. Like, all these buttons work on there and stuff. And uh, this is a search filter. So you can go into this little ribbon. You can type some stuff, a room number or 
a nickname of a room, and you'll be able to find something. Maybe not all the rooms in the school yet. I mean, I've already put in a couple manually. And the same thing goes for the, for the last one. So once you find your start your, your end, you hit get directions, and it'll bring you to a preloaded route. We have it basically coming in from the one-stop center down to uh, the testing room. So you can check out the route. It, the play button works. It'll just take you along your route. We obviously have some stuff to do, and this was just a demo, just to present it at the end of the summer. But uh, yeah, even the little... Uh, the backwards and forwards buttons work. So when you hit the like the next, it'll just take you to the next node. But if you hit the like the skip, it'll take you to the nearest intersection. That was another way we, we have our data set up so that there's intersections at all, all the major hallways. But yeah, breaking routes. We use these technologies: Express, MySQL, 3JS, and Node.js. Some of them are application frameworks that just gave us the tools to build it. None of this was done like purely from scratch. What you, I mean, like when you're building a real application, you use a lot of libraries and stuff and a lot of other tools that people may have used just to help them. For instance, the search filter, uh, we basically took it from uh, a pre-made search filter and then we customized it to our own needs, made it more efficient and all that sort of good stuff. But the, the core of it was still in the background. CentOS. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, no it was the that's Linux. Linux. I know, that's what I'm Thinking, I was I was getting mixed up with free BDS. What was the name of the library that we used? Well, oh, that one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think. Of. I don't know, but it uses the buy tap algorithm for searching. There's like a lot of different search algorithms. You went to every hallway. Not yet. No, no, no. Oh. You oh, go to every hallway. <laughs> <laughs> like how much data? Like if I put in a room, it won't show me the destination. Oh. Absolutely not. So, 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 so. <laughs> Damn. Not yet. Yeah. Eventually. Area. Yeah. Eventually. A certain area of the college. Right. You get from, with this link, you get from the student center to the testing room. Not even like the little window, because we didn't have enough time to take enough pictures down that hallway. You can see it was like, it was like 10 of us, and Just this remember, is a huge act. Every picture you see, it was me at 8 p.m. in the summer, just ducking somewhere. In yeah, he's in every picture. I should have always just had like a thumbs up or something. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have any questions about 3SP, about burning yeah. routes, about web applications, like application building in general. Yeah, if you have any questions about application building, I, I like the topic, you know. It's really interesting. I, I will. <laughs> it's really interesting to see how like an idea for an application becomes so involved, you know, like the smallest details require so much. Libraries knowledge. What kind of is the app build? Because sometimes you know how sometimes like uh, uh, you make like a phone, like an app for like an iPhone, it would work, and it like you mess it up when it's on an iPad. Great question. <laughs> this is a web application. So you scan that code and it opens it on your browser. No downloading involved. No, 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 yeah, he, he, he got that. It's messed up because of like the right. styling. So oh, yeah, for. Uh, Generally speaking, you would create some sort of a, uh, a style sheet that would be compatible with a large variety of devices. Also for reactive applications, they have libraries that give that to you, so it allows you to just build UI and then it'll adapt to you. You know, there, there are so many options out there on the market. For this application, actually, because it's, you know, we had so little time to develop it, uh, it's just portrait on a phone. That's it. And more so, it's actually only Chrome because you know you have WebKit and all these different compatibilities that have to be in place for different browsers. Yeah. What was your experience with like project management? Just crack the whip. That was yeah, his yeah. experience. Crack the whip. Basically, yeah. what I can tell you is, is you know, disciplinary action is key. So if somebody isn't doing something, it's very important to get physical with them. <laughs> nice. uh. <laughs> New images, new areas, I'm actually really like that's a great it's, question. Yeah, it's a great yeah. question. And it's something that we've been thinking we've about. Been talking about it a lot. So we've defined processes for actually mapping nodes because obviously you know you have to have a standard. For example, nodes have to be a certain distance apart. You can't create a bunch of nodes that are a meter apart and then switch the two meters because it's going to create a, a bad flow when you're progressing between images. Um, so we start by defining things like the frequency of nodes, 
uh, where the nodes will be positioned in the hallway. Yes. So let's say the center points of the hallway. Uh, and how we'll be positioning nodes for waypoints, so doors, so that when you get to a destination, you actually see the door instead of seeing it from the side and not really knowing where it is. So there's a lot of standards that you have to establish, and that comes with the initial planning stage of developing an application. Once you've established those standards, then you could create documentation that would, you know, you could distribute to people for performing those different tasks. So you'd create documents that explain the procedure of uh, mapping nodes, collecting data, uh, making sure that the data is compatible with the database, or whether or not you're using a node management software or any sort of data management software. So. It's not as easy as just making a 360 <laughs> thing and just uh, you have to expire. I wish it I wish. <laughs> you can't just say, here, let me put it into this pipeline, process it, and it's ready to go. So it needs more finesse. I mean, eventually, let's say that this was a business that you were going to create for the future, yeah. and you were going to market it to a lot of different people. You would sit down and you create specialized software, right? We're programmers. The solution is always software. <laughs> so you'd create a specialized software that handles that data, you know, and, and then that way it'd be foolproof. I take an image, uh, I already have it indexed somehow, let's say by name or something, or metadata. I throw it into the software, it organizes it for me, and then I can, you know, uh, connect it to other nodes, uh, mark it as accessible or inaccessible, so on and so forth. Oh, you know, it may seem like this is a lot, right? I mean, it seems pretty intimidating. It kind of is, you know? But I had no experience doing any of this stuff beforehand. I never built an application. My only programs were from computer science courses, from the C++ courses. That was all the programming I ever did. And I started last year in the fall when I came here programming, and I helped build this, and I did a really good job. It wasn't easy, and I had to learn a lot. You can say it. It's okay. I did a good job. You did a good job. Um, it's not easy, and you have to have him screaming at you, but it, you learn. I learned so much. It's not even funny. It's crazy how much I learned, and how, you should see my resume now, guys. Oh my god, it's sick. It looks so sick. I'm like, I'm up there, you know. I can really get a job with it. So. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, come on. I had a couple bucks. You did a couple bucks, too, you know. It's a, it's a paid internship. Yeah, it's a paid internship. Uh-huh. Just a little. Uh, they pay you. Hey. <laughs> right. It's a meager existence as a software developer. You know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, uh, this winter we're going to be working on this thing. We might be looking for some new peeps. We might need help. Mostly with gathering the data, honestly. So getting familiar with the database and, and the node mapping software, taking pictures and stuff like and, that. And, you know, for that, having an understanding of like how data exists in the background is definitely helpful. So it's a good way to get introduced to databases, to uh, how data is defined for an application. Also, 360 cameras, and, you know, probably get to shoot the shit and just, you know, mess around in the halls while it's you're waiting for it to take. So. It takes like a minute for the thing to actually take the photos, so you do have time to just stand there. Yeah. You said that you'd be invited if you were STEM with a particular... Yeah, so 3SP program, uh, it runs in the winter and in the summer, and if you have a high enough GPA and you've taken, I think it's at least one STEM-related course, so a math course. Or really? Yeah, yeah, that's why there's a lot of nurses in there. Where do you get nursing invited? students can get into it. Where do you get invited? You just get an email uh, automatically based on your GPA. Believe it's a 375. 375, yeah. Now, mind you, if you were interested in it, I, I don't know if I even got notified. No, he wasn't I went out of my way. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I would qualify for that, but I don't think I had an email. Yeah, well, let us know. We could go talk to Lewis. Okay. Go to the yeah. office, sit down. And, okay. and yeah, you can always just, the STEM Center is, uh, is downstairs on the first floor, and the people that sit in the, there's a guy over in the back, mm -hmm. people in the front, you talk to them. You're That's a second year student, right? I think I'm going, I think this is either my third or I'm going into it. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, maybe you got it, but it was like way back. Maybe. Yeah, you never know. A lot of people, like uh, when we got inducted or whatever, the beginning of it, they say that they send out like 80 emails and like 30 people respond or something like crazy like that. So just keep your eye out for it if you're interested. And if you if you don't see it, then definitely look, look for it.
for ASP. You know, STEM. The STEM program is its own thing here. And uh, I don't know if you, if you guys have ever seen it, but down the hallway is the STEM Center. It's like a million dollar STEM lab with laser cutters, 3D printers, a whole soldering station. Everything you can think of is there. The other cool thing about the 3SP program is you get, uh, like over the summer, you can choose to do it for one or two sections. Like it, it coincides with the uh, summer class schedule. So you can and do you're, summer one or summer two or summer two. Right, or both. Uh, and you're given opportunity, well, part of the requirement is that you take certifications. So this summer they had, I did an R program, R uh, language programming one. We did a, we had to do a communications one. There was sol mic soldering and microelectronics. There was a TensorFlow one that we, we blew it out of the water. Oh. But yeah, it's a great program and you can do some really cool stuff. Definitely keep your eye out for this stuff. And let us know if you want to work on this thing at some point. We'd, if you're interested, we'd be happy to hear from you. Yeah, prior to this 3 SP, but there has been a lot of cases of non 3 SP too. Oh, yeah. Which is a good sign. So even if Phil's invited, you can get a case like that. Yeah. So. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. And definitely, if you want, you totally mess with that demo. Yeah, it's up there. Do, uh, Send us bug reports. Oh yeah, you could just go to the website. It's routes.bergen.edu. We got the domain name with the school. Subdomain for the school. Legit.